One question that I've got since starting this series is, aren't there times when being alone is good? The simple answer is yes. Jesus shows us many times when alone time was essential to his relational and social work. I may even go so far as to say, yes, Jesus was an introvert. He almost always takes time alone to recharge and refocus and re-energize. That being said, I still think there are a number of lessons about the difficulty of feeling alone or lonely that we can take from Jesus' actions. And that's where we're going to be spending our next few weeks. First up, let's talk about the wilderness. Wilderness is so often both literal and figurative in Scripture. The 40 years of wandering that the Hebrew people do talk about a time of struggle and doubt. The 40 days that Jesus spends before starting his ministry here on earth talk about a time of temptation and exhaustion. And I want to look at the latter today. How time alone may have influenced Jesus' choices in the future for himself and for the disciples who were trying to follow him. Jesus leaves for the wilderness right after being baptized and blessed. It seems like things are going well, particularly for those of us who grew up in the mountains of Virginia, like me, where wilderness is full of trees and streams and cool breezes. But it's worth remembering that the wilderness that Jesus goes into around Jerusalem had no tall trees providing shade, no cool creeks to quench his thirst or wash dry the dust from his hot, dirty body. And Jesus spent 40 days here, alone. Have you ever had a dry and lonely experience like this? I feel like many people spend a period of their lives like this. Alone, lonely, and longing. Some of us grew up in small towns where we knew everyone in our school and everyone knew us. We got to college and had no idea how to actually make friends. Some of us are introverts or have social anxiety or for whatever reason can't seem to make those friendship connections or at least not the type that we want to have. Most of us have spent some time feeling like an outsider, desperate for someone to know me. Over the past few years, many of us have discovered or rediscovered passions which have become our work and our lives. Some of us may be working extra shifts because we love what we do or because it provides us a chance to do what we love. But loneliness stays close by and often becomes the why we keep working instead of taking care of ourselves. Deep down, each of us has a feeling to be truly known. And that wasn't any different with Jesus. Jesus is led to the desert by the Spirit to be tempted. There is something about aloneness which opens us up to temptation. And we want to escape this aloneness so badly that we tend to enter relationships which are bad or even toxic. And we are tempted to hold on to whatever we do have so tightly because we know at least we have the power to control that. And we might even try to control others ourselves and finding power intoxicating and respect a substitute for being truly known. So yes, we face temptation when we are alone. We can find ourselves filled with anxiety about what's to come or guilt over how we even got into this wilderness place. It should be noted that Jesus' time in the wilderness would not have been included in the accounts of his life and ministry unless Jesus himself told the tale. And Jesus here with this tale, when it is first shared to his disciples, 
would not be portrayed as we often see it whenever we repeat it year after year as overcoming all this temptation and everything. But in that first telling, Jesus comes across as rather vulnerable to all the deceits and troubles that appear and creep into all of human life. Jesus is offered what seems to be a way to control his narrative and demonstrate his power. He's offered what seems like an answer to his immediate needs for food and water. And all of this time, there is no support, no one who knows him and can share in his struggles. And the temptations continue to grow from those immediate need to those of self-importance and self-worth. I don't think these temptations are all that different than the ones that we see in our lives. It's just like Jesus is undergoing the intensive class version of being human. In our world today, one of the most common issues I hear about is alienation, loneliness, and that nagging fear of a life without meaning. And the world knows this and encourages us to seek relief in the form of distraction. In fact, it's not just the world that does this, but even faith can be built around the idea that the church exists to provide whatever numbs the soul or distracts the mind just enough to get us through the daily grind. But what of these 40 days? What about all the times that Jesus retreats or stays behind to pray? It is clear that this isn't an escape or a time of rest here in the wilderness, but it is a time of refueling. Jesus takes time to examine the things that give life meaning when on his own, to reflect on the things that tempt him, the things that fuel him, the things and the relationships that hold meaning in his life. Yet, I think the best proof of what Jesus discovered about being human during these 40 days shows up is when he, in how he treats others going to do God's work more than his own actions and his work. Jesus sends out the disciples in pairs, knowing that he has faced temptation alone. Jesus' actions echo God's words from the beginning. It is not good for a person to be alone. You are not meant to face rejection alone. You are not meant to face the temptation of being seen as a savior alone. You are not meant to do life alone, but with others who have had the time to get to fully know you or those who provide a space for you to be fully known. There are many ways that we reach the wilderness and many forms that it takes. Sometimes we have gone there on our own, aiming to accomplish what we want most for ourselves. And our aloneness is overwhelming, and we need to remember to seek that person to walk along with us. Other times, we know God is in what brought us there. Maybe it's so we can see the temptations of our humanity and see our lives and then make the life of the entire world around us our primary source of vision. But regardless, we aren't meant to stay in the wilderness. We aren't meant to stay alone. It is a place that we learn and pray by paying attention. And then we exit, hopefully with a better understanding of ourselves and the world. Seeing things more clearly. And there's a wisdom and care that we can provide to others who feel trapped in their aloneness. Thank you and hope to see you soon.